this week on The Choice. We're going to head to Montana with Deep in the Bush Adventures. Big Which Jeff Jerome. Country, yep. You know, we love Jeff and we love Montana. Oh, yeah. We're set up on Yellowstone River bottoms. They're coming from the fields, going to their bedding. We're just going to sit here and hold tight. The chest match continues. What do you say? What a hunt. That was unbelievable. This is a beautiful bear. Welcome to this week's The Choice, and this week is a little bit different. Yeah, this week, you know what? We're going to head to Montana with Deep in the Bush Adventures. Big with Sky Jeff Country, Jerome, yep. You know, and we love Jeff and we love Montana. Oh, yeah. Except for those deer out there, for some reason, just like to kick our butts. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to show you, really, it's been two falls. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? We're and, chasing and it's some good deer. We're being just having, real. Yeah, you know what? We've got a lot of things to share with you. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, let's get after it the Big Sky Country with Jeff Jerome. Well, it's our first morning sitting out here in Montana with Deep in the Bush Adventures. We just had a doe and two little ones walk by. We're set up on Yellowstone River, river bottoms. They're coming from the fields, going to their bedding. We're just going to sit here and hold tight. Jeff seems to think that it could go. They could still be moving until 10, 30, 11 o'clock this morning. We'll see what happens. It's been really windy. we got a winter storm watch coming in tonight and tomorrow, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. You know, one of the things you've got to understand, we don't have large stands of timber. Right. So it, it makes it easier once you locate your movements from your feeding to your bedding areas. Right. And most of those bedding areas are going to be small, tight areas on the river. Little pockets of timber. Because there's the not a lot there. of timber. Right, right. You know, so, so using that, using sat, sat, satellite images and stuff, and, and your guide and your outfitter knowing exactly the lay of the land, I mean, allows you to get in to where you need to be. And the biggest thing, like Vicky's saying, is the wind. We had some really crazy weather, though. We had really high oh, winds. Man, it would never stop. Blowing. I mean, to the point where when we're sitting in the blinds, we're thinking we need to attach it even more to yep. the ground because they were going to blow away. Freddie and I are sitting in the ground blind, and we see a nice deer, and then another deer comes in, but they just kept milling around. It was so windy, they didn't want to come out into the open where I would have a shot. They stayed in the thicket. And the grass the thicket, was so tall. And the in grass some was spots. so tall that it actually, it was really cool to watch the scenario mm -hmm. pull out in front of us. But in reality, even if they had stepped out where they were with the way the wind was blowing, I couldn't have ethically felt comfortable taking that shot yep. with that wind. Well, it is a little after 10, and the wind is picking up, and any deer that we've seen lately have been running just straight from the, from the north to the south. The wind is howling. They're not standing by. We had some close encounters this morning. We had a pretty cool young eight come through. We'll see what Ralphie saw, and we'll move on from here. We know there's a big winter storm coming. Chance of two to four inches of snow tonight and into tomorrow, so we'll see what it holds up. We may be hunting another ground blind, I don't know about tomorrow morning. They're saying 30 mile an hour winds with snow turning to rain. So I don't know what tomorrow morning has in store, but maybe tonight we can get it done.
One of the cool things with Jeff is, you know, you can hunt either or. It's an any deer tag. It's an any deer tag. And there, he's got, I mean, this guy's Mule got deer or white tons of, of acreage to hunt, right. all private. So, so you know, there were times we were jumping back and forth thinking, well, maybe we could get on some, yeah, you know, nice Yeah, depending on the weather butt. and the wind and the, and winds. the directions of the yep. winds made a big difference on how we were going to hunt. So what's cool is you're a lot, you, you have the capabilities of, of doing either or, right. you know, in, in that time period. So it was fun. You know, we'd found, we'd located where the deer, because they were way out, and, and one of the crazy things, we had to actually drive in past the deer. Right. You, you know what I mean? And so we drove in past the deer, all the all the ag fields, got in, and we got we got the blind, I mean, rushed into that olive tree. It was beautiful. And sure enough, here comes a the deer. They're coming out of the bedding area. We were playing that wind perfect. The does start piling out. We had nice deer left to right. Everything's going good. adventures in Montana. We found a new little audio. We pinpointed it. We had a bunch of mature bugs, does and everything all around us. We got a beautiful, beautiful big ten. A couple of really good eights, possibly one was a nine. They stayed out about 65 yards. But we're going to have a great wind and we are going to be in here early in the morning, and if the wind's right, early in the afternoon tomorrow, if the morning doesn't pan out. Well, it's another chilly morning. It's about 32 degrees outside. We had a light frost when we came in this morning. We're set up in a spot where we sat two days ago, two mornings ago, on a really cold morning. Um, we had the blind. Jeff moved the blind for us. Where it was, we were just too low with some of this, um, some of the grass that's growing up. We're still in the same position, and if we get a decent deer coming through here, I mean, all of the shots are within 40 yards, which is amazing. And, and we're just going to sit tight and see what happens. It's supposed to get almost 70 today. The winds are supposed to pick up, and tomorrow the winds are supposed to be horrendous again. So. We're sitting in the ground blind, Freddie and I, and we see this beautiful, it, he had like a chocolate rack, this buck. He's beautiful. As you know, when we're hunting in the ground blind, 
and you're trying to film it, it puts a little extra stress on what you're doing. <laughs> Only because what I can see for a clear shot, drawing back, getting ready to shoot, the cameraman, Freddie, thanks Freddie, can't because all of a sudden there's a be you know, part of the blind in the way or something and you can only move so much and you don't want to move when the animal's around and you know what, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Well, it's about quarter to eight and we've seen some deer start moving, it's a good day. We saw a big chocolate eight, tight, beautiful buck. He come in right behind two other younger bucks. I drew back on him and when I got a good angle on him, unfortunately he went behind that cedar tree there. So Jeff goes, hey, you got your all-season deer tags, why don't you come back out? It didn't take me long. Sighted in the browning BAR. Got my instinct Cabela scope on that baby. We are ready to rock and roll. This bedding area stretches a long way along the river. So we decided to just really start trying to move in on them slowly, not pressure them heavy. Well, we did it. We finally did pinpoint the majority of these deer were coming out of this point from here to that big, big cottonwood right in the corner. Our problem was during archery, the winds picked up. I mean, we had 50, 60 mile an hour gusts. We were on them, but there was no, no way of at least, you know, trying to, to get what we needed to get as close as we needed. So one of the other advantages, because mm -hmm. it's an all-season tag, you know, Chad, and we we had to back out, right? Because I had that that buck in my head. I had that, yeah, and I still had the hoof prints on my butt from him earlier. The chest match continues. We saw him, and I mean, everything was going good, but I, I, we probably should have had our setup further down, you know, and, and a little more to the east, because we were we were skirting that wind, and that wind, even though we had just a, we, we, we thought it was a, a southwest wind, uh, and it just came a little more south, it blew right down that big opening. He, he caught it, the doe caught, the does caught it, and they were gone. And then I just, I Pride. don't know. I cried. You cried. I still have the bruises. Might have be. They might have become tattoos by now because hmm. they haven't gone away. But that's all right. You know. I mean, the reason we're trying to share with you all of this stuff is because we had the encounters. I mean, we could have shot deer. You know, we sort of set our sights a little differently because we saw the deer that we really wanted to get after. But but the reality of it is, this is hunting. We were playing the chess game like you would do at home. If you adhere to knowing what you know, you know, back home, food, cover, and water, I'm telling you, you could have the adventure of a lifetime. And because you're out, you're hunting these river bottoms, it's, that's where the majority of the cover is. Most time, you can count on that being their bedding area. So we were hunting right in between, and we, it's just that the big guys we were looking for they, they didn't file through. We did see a good one way further back.
Jeff just dropped us off. What's gonna happen is the deer are gonna be coming from the north there. And he said there's really not much green that way and there's this beautiful green alfalfa field here. He said sometimes they'll stage right here before they go down into this, this dry creek bottom and up into the alfalfa field. So we're gonna get set up and we get in, open the windows up, squish down some of this grass and get set. Y'all just watched the show, and you're probably going, they didn't kill nothing. The, you know rea what? the reality of it is, is that's hunting. It is hunting. And you know what? We've gone out there a couple we times. We saw lots of deer. And we're going back again because, you know what? It's just a matter of closing that distance. We had our bows out there. No. And, and, you know, we're trying to get closer, and weather changes. Heck, that, fir that first year we had so much wind, it was insane. Well, you, you know what? And, and you get into it, you see a deer that you possibly really want to set your sights for, and then you, you really don't want to deviate. Now, right. did we learn a lesson? Yeah, we did. I what, mean, that tags don't taste good with salt and No, water? tags never tasted oh, good. Oh, okay, maybe that's But what, what we wanted to do, we wanted to portray to you and show you the real deal. Show yep. you what, it's, what hunting's truly all about. It you is. don't go out every week at every different hunt and you shoot something. This is the reality of what we all do, the lifestyle of hunting. And you know what? We're going back because number one, he's got the game. Yes. It's a great place to hunt. Good state, phenomenal yep. state to yep. hunt. And I mean, and we Jeff just, himself is an okay guy. Yeah, he's okay. I mean, <laughs> he's gonna kill us. He's gonna be good. And man, you know what, guys? We want to thank you for making your choice. The choice. And we'll see you next week. And maybe this year when we go to Montana, we'll actually like fill a tag instead of salt and pepper.